To contextualize this review for you before we get into the film, I would like to put some pieces of media on the table. I'm sure we've all seen the infamous picture circling around Twitter of a 2011 interview where George Miller was asked if he had any plans for Happy Feet 3, and he said, if you were to put a gun to my head and say you have to come up for a story of Happy Feet 3, I'd say shoot me. So we all know about that, but I would also like to include these photos of Robin Williams looking absolutely miserable during the promo for this film. <laughs> Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and my ongoing, soon to be almost over, uh, quest to review every single movie Robin Williams ever made. This week I am looking at the only other franchise sequel that Robin ever appeared in, or I guess lended his voice to, 2011's Happy Feet 2, directed once again by George Miller, who has quite the filmography. If you would like to hear more about that, go watch my original Happy Feet review. Starring the returning voices of Elijah Wood, Hugo Weaving, and E.J. Daly made a return doing the singing for Mumble and Gloria's son Eric. And then newcomers, Pink, replacing Brittany Murphy as Gloria, the rapper Common, Brad Pitt, Matt Damon, Sofia Vergara, Hank Azaria once again, Ava Akers, and returning once again as the voices of Ramon, Lovelace, and the narrator, Robin Williams. So Happy Feet 2 is not very good. Uh, this is my first time seeing it. I've never seen it before. And like I had said in my Happy Feet review, I wa watching it as an adult, I was a little bummed out because I remember really loving it as a child and it was just kind of basic and fine, but not great. But at least Happy Feet 1 had a a few concise plot lines that it was trying to tell of the story of. Happy Feet 2 is all over the place, so the storylines are basically Mumble and Gloria's son is afraid to dance. This puffin played by Hank Azaria is pretending to be a penguin that can fly and Global warming is a thing that's happening, but it's never officially mentioned, and the ice traps the penguins in and they have to try and get them out. Mumble beefs with an elephant seal. The kids run away and get brought back. Ramon is in love with Sofia Vergara. Ah, what else? <laughs> oh, the whole Krill storyline. There's also these two Krills, played by Matt Damon and Brad Pitt who decide that they are tired of just the basic krill life and they would like to leave the colony and explore. So there's quite a lot going on here. Before we get into the review, let's get into the brief history. So Happy Feet 2 is unfortunately Robin's last animated feature that would be released prior to his death. The parts of the krill were originally offered to Stephen Colbert and Jon Stewart, who had to pass because of scheduling conflicts. Allegedly, I read that Brittany Murphy was replaced by Pink prior to her death because of some tabloid news about her doing drugs that broke. I don't know how true that is. It's unfortunate either way. Of the script, Robin said that George wrote it, and it's really kind of interesting. There are some really nice twists to it. I don't know what he was speaking of, but um, you'll notice that between this film and next week's film, which came out in 2013, there's a gap in Robin's resume. So in 2011, he was being interviewed about meeting his new wife, Susan. So he had a really quick turnaround from Marsha. They met at an Apple store. Not an Apple, like, Apple. Like, they met, like, at a fruit stand, I guess. So that was happening, and then Robin was also getting ready to start his Broadway run in Bengal Tiger at the Baghdad Zoo, which I'll talk a little bit more about the history of that when I get to next week's review, because it's more around that time. Happy Feet 2 is really, really messy. Like I said, there's about, like, seven storylines going on. None of them really get any focus. Mumble as a main character is barely in it and kind of boring. Happy Feet 2 is also a lot less horny than the first one was. The first one was rampantly horny. This one has a weird moment at the beginning where of course they're doing their riff off a la Pitch Perfect, which Pitch Perfect probably honestly took these from Happy Feet, but they're doing like their song mashup and some of the young penguin chicks start singing sexy back but as Fluffy back, and they're doing like one of these numbers. It's very odd. The son of the rapper Penguin is really annoying. I don't know why they felt like they had to have a hood stereotype, because they already have Spanish stereotypes. The jokes are not funny. There's a couple of puns here and there that are okay. Like somebody 
tells someone else, the elephant seal tells Mumble to fluff off, I think, which is pushing it, but a little funny. There, there's some funny-ish bird puns, but the humor of Ramon relies basically solely on Robin Williams saying do instead of you, and in Ramon's first like minute and a half of screen time, he says do about 12 times, I think. So there's a lot of moments of this one that are basically just complete retreads of the first one, like you have the the kid who doesn't fit in and he gets embarrassed because he gets his head stuck in the snow and pisses midair. And then of course you have, once again, you have the big finale style musical number taking place in the middle of the film with like half an hour left to go. This film is an hour 40, really didn't need to be. There's just a lot of unnecessary stuff. The Krill storyline is probably the best storyline and it doesn't tie back into the main storyline at all other than you see the krill like running around in between some of the penguins feet and their fur but they never tie those the storylines together character wise which was a bummer i ramon ramon's storyline with sofia vergara's penguin is weird he appears still in Mumble's tribe for like a minute and then he's like screw this I'm going home which like why didn't he go home in the first place he decides that he loves this woman now and also Lovelace has on a knitted sweater and that's never explained but this Sofia Vergara is like ew I don't like you at all and then he takes a nosedive off a cliff to be with her and she's like oh you're so beautiful why didn't I see this before very odd. Also, Happy Feet 2 has a couple of those montage song moments, but it turns away from that and has a couple of original songs, and I didn't like any of them. <laughs> There's a whole original song about um, the Puffin and how they're all worshipping him, and he had a vision because he was on a boat with some humans and he saw them eating chicken. And he's like, I've seen our future, which that was like the only genuinely funny moment I thought for me. But like the original songs weren't the point and Pink has one that's really lame. And then Eric, Mumble and Gloria's son, just busts out an opera moment at the end of the movie. That was very weird. Eric is also very, very small and seems like an infant for most of this movie and is like a lot younger and I don't know. Mumble is able to find Eric and the other penguins by like tapping on their tracks and being like, ooh, I know that you were here. So like, is he a tracker now? There's just a lot of stuff that is not explained. You have those a couple weird live action moments with humans like they shred a guitar solo while Lovelace dances. Uh, it was very weird. They use the music that they did use. Oh, like, I know we had to bring back Queen because we had somebody to love as an iconic moment in the first one, but it's just like, they have Papa Uma Mau Mau as a song that they use, the Maya He, Maya Who, Maya Ha Ha song, which in 2011, that meme was dead and buried. So I don't know. That's the problem, I think, with animated movies trying to do pop culture is that it takes so long to make them that oftentimes by the time those movies come out, the jokes in them are so dated. I found myself checking out a lot because the story was very silly. It read a lot more like a like a children's TV special to me. There wasn't really anything catering to anybody who was above the age of six. To be honest, the animation was still fine, if not a little bit better than the first one. The Krill animation was cool. It, it all looked good. There just wasn't, there was no main storyline. They never officially addressed the environmental issue like they did in the first one. You just see stuff melting and them talking about the green and obviously the ice is trapping them, but they never come out and say that that's what they're addressing, which honestly kind of annoyed me. We all know what you're doing, so just say it. Like, don't dance around it. It just, the moments that they chose to repeat from the first one just felt like repetition and on the whole there was not that much to enjoy about it. Robin's characters were a lot less present, Lovelace was hardly in it, and Ramon was hardly in it, and when he was he was mad annoying. I just did not, I didn't really find anything to enjoy about this movie and you know, in general, Happy Feet 2 was kind of a flop. It grossed 64 million domestically and 150 million worldwide on a $135 million budget, but ultimately it ended up losing the studio around $40 million. 
Because I think by the time 2011 rolled around, Happy Feet came out in 2006, and it was a moment and then it was gone. Like it wasn't... Happy Feet's not like regaled as an animation classic that people would be excited for a sequel for. So when this dropped, I remember being like, why now? Why at all? Because it's not really a story that lends itself to continuation. It was like a very simple storyline to begin with, and you can tell that they were struggling, especially with the krill being... I got a comment from somebody on my Happy Feet review that they were like, I kind of enjoyed the second one and you'll really like the krill. And I'm like, yeah, the krill were fine. It was fine. It was the best storyline, but it didn't tie back into anything. And I'm just, ultimately, I'm just like, ugh. Like, I just, it's not gonna, it's not one of the worst ones that I've seen, but it was just so, like, messy and strictly, it, like, it read as strictly for children. And in general, Happy Feet 2 received mixed reviews. The consensus was that the animation was still good, but the narrative was incoherent and that it didn't live up to the original. Roger Ebert gave it, I think, two stars out of a possible four, and said that the dialogue was too philosophical and analytical, which it was in some points, but for the most part it really did just feel like a kid's television movie. And yeah, I guess that's kind of a bummer, but I also wasn't going into this with high expectations, so it is what it is. If you're interested in watching Happy Feet 2 or revisiting it for whatever reason, you can watch it currently on Netflix and HBO Max. You could also rent it in all of the usual places. Next week I am jumping to 2013 to look at a comedy that I have heard some things about. Uh, it's The Big Wedding. I think I'm pretty much done with starring vehicle films for Robin at this point. So yeah, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the last couple reviews. I'll be doing top 10 best and worst at the end of this as well, so you'll definitely want to be around for that. Um, until next time, I don't know, I also forgot to talk about the weird sexy moment with Hank Azaria Puffin and Gloria that happened. They also tried to copy Chicken Run for two seconds where they were like, teach the bird, teach the penguins to fly! Which, don't copy Chicken Run on my, not on my watch. Don't copy Chicken Run on my watch. But until next time, blast some Maya He, Maya Who, and... Shake your little tail feather, I guess. I don't know how else to exit this shit show.